Hey, Nelson, so you are the Emmy-nominated production designer behind the scenes of this phenomenal series. So I want you to take me back and tell me a little bit about your journey working your way up towards this particular project. Well, I've worked for many years with the producing director, Mimi Leader, um, mm -hmm. and we had uh, just finished a project called On the Basis of Sex about the early years of Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Mm -hmm. And uh, I love working with Mimi. It's just always so amazing and interesting and all this. And, and she brought me on uh, to do this uh, as the show was developing, and um, it's it's been super interesting and challenging to do a really deep dive into New York and really convince my New York friends that we're filming in New York. Yeah. Um, it's one of those shows I jokingly call wealth porn. You're trying to see how the other half lives. But the journey, I think, was about really trying to come up with an authentic uh, group of characters that are dealing with real life issues, things that we've all seen on the news, things that are really uh, impacting all of our lives and you're wanting to see our, our characters work through those issues. And so I'm trying to create environments that you uh, are, are a little aspirational for the audience. Yeah. Uh, and they're like, oh, that's how they live, or oh, this is how they do such and such. Mm -hmm. And then also a real pull back the, the curtain to see how those shows are made, even if it's evening news at our fake, you know, our, our, our network which um, has been called UBA for the first three seasons, and of course there's been a big merger for season four. Mm -hmm. So uh, coming up with not only how to do the environments, yeah. but how to create a sense of real network uh, marketing, PR, mm -hmm. all the fake shows you see, posters you're seeing, uh, how they market their, their anchors, how they, they promote yeah. all of their shows, and so as we walk all the hallways, as you're going through things, we have to create that. It's not in the script. So you're trying to really uh, add a verisimilitude to it so it has a real sense yeah. of reality. Yeah, and I mean, it's so real. Like, when Jennifer is like literally in her black truck with her driver and pulling up to the building and you see her billboard, it is real life. I mean, it's happening in New York right now with Good right. Morning America, right? Correct, correct. So take me back to what you mentioned prior to um, just wrapping this first question up, New York. I'm interested to hear about some of the filming locations for season three, because right. if I'm not mistaken, there was quite a bit of emphasis placed on New York in season two. You guys filmed in multiple places, but... Well, actually, you know, surprisingly, in season two, we didn't go to New York at all because it was during COVID, but I had mm. to do New Year's Eve in Times Square it, and make it look like that, though I built the set on the parking lot in Santa Anita Racetrack. So we couldn't even go. Yeah. So season three, we actually got five days worth of filming in New York. Mm -hmm. And um, still, that's not a lot. You're trying yeah. to do you know, uh, uh, sections of roads or buildings that there's no way I can actually do that in, in yeah. Los Angeles. So um, I judiciously early scout and then I pitch ideas to the writers about things that I think where people should live or, or their journey of their day. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a huge map in the office that uh, geolocates everyone. Where do they live? Where's the offices? What, what are their favorite coffee places? Where do they yeah. get their bagels? And so that it constantly reminds everyone that it's a real city, these are real things, and so props and smalls show up on the set that look like they're part of their daily journey, which would be mm -hmm. different than another character's. Mm -hmm. And even in, in our driving sequences, what is the journey they're taking? What street are they going? So that everyone that watches feels like it's real. And then, yeah. then there's insider things for um, ads and shows and things that most people don't know, but New Yorkers would know, that yeah. just, populate uh, the backgrounds everywhere I can so that people really feel like, oh, wow, that really does shoot here. Yeah. You know? And it, it takes a lot to craft a contemporary show and make it feel like it's really, really interesting and big. And yeah. season three was different than the previous seasons in that for once we went into almost everyone's private spaces. Mm -hmm. So where they purchased during COVID or where they, you know, what part of town did they live in? And I'm really trying to delineate between the characters mm -hmm. where they live, how they and how they live, and what has drawn them to where they are. So, mm -hmm. uh, 
I expand the show into different neighborhoods. In season three, we saw Brownstones. We went into Tribeca and Soho, where we hadn't been before. Mm -hmm. I put Bradley's uh, loft. She's trying to spend her money. And mm -hmm. and everyone thinks that loft is in Tribeca, but yet that uh, loft is on stage at Sony, and uh, which is pretty crazy. So yeah. even when she's walking up to the exterior that's in Tribeca, mm -hmm. we digitally put in images of the set in Sony to make it look like that was what was really inside the mm -hmm. building. And it was my own invention. The idea was that it felt very industrial, like her West Virginia roots, mm -hmm. but it also was a little too empty because she's kind of empty inside trying to figure out who she is. Yeah. And so I'm always trying to add the levels of, of story. What are these people really like? What is their journey like? What's going on inside them? Mm -hmm. And that you get those visual clues by seeing their space. And before I let you go, I'm interested to hear a little bit on the build up and the breakdown of some of these sets. Like, what does that process look like in a collaboration, you know, with others that's working on set with it's, you? It's crazy. Obviously, yeah. um, I, I, I'm the only designer on the show, uh, and you have different cinematographers that are working at different AD teams, different directors. And so um, in a way, I'm kind of like the show visual Bible. And uh, mm -hmm. I am I try to keep everybody, you know, on track of what the look is, because someone comes in, wants to put their imprint on the show. And mm -hmm. you want to make sure that you're being true to those environments and things. And, and then you do something crazy like go to space and you're like, oh, oh we're not a sci-fi show. How do I make space feel real and like the latest and greatest of what is available today technology right without going off and becoming another apple show you know yeah. or something but, you know <laughs> um and so it's really super fun to try to really dig into the details of what makes uh, you know i jokingly say i'm a visual anthropologist i'm mm. i'm figuring out all the the things that make each each person tick yeah. and then try to manifest that in the visuals uh, that we put together. So I get everybody, you know, the, the DPs and the, the first ADs and those directors and get them on board with ideas. And then mm -hmm. they, they go, oh, how about this? And then I springboard to another place. And, and we try to, try to make the show something that uh, is, like, beyond what people expected yeah. when they first tuned in. Well, thank you so much for chatting with me. Thank you so much. I'm looking forward to you springing your way to the Emmys Yo, very I'm super soon excited. with those 16 nominations. Oh. So we will be seeing you at the Emmys. Thank you so much. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you. Thank you so much.